Feather headdresses are festive. They're fun, and I want to have them on my kids' table this Thanksgiving. And the way I'm going to do it is cut a piece of construction paper, make it narrower at the bottom and a little bit wider at the top, and just kind of hold it up on your head to see if, it, if it's going to fit. Once you do that, take a piece of felt and hot glue that to the piece of construction paper. That piece of felt is going to be a lot softer on people's heads. I love these strips of feathers. I just got them at a sewing store and I'm going to kind of layer them like ribbons. Look at the color combination, it's so cool. I think I'm going to go black first, a little wildness. Then I'm going to mellow it out. And then I'm going to go natural. And then some bands. I'm going to start at the top and when you hot glue your first strip, you want to do it at kind of an arch because that's the way it's going to go on the head. And just kind of keep working all the way down. Now I got to add in some big ones, some really like strong ones. And I take these big long feathers and we're going to use chamois cloths and rip it into strips. Just wrap it around the ends of the feathers, attach it, you know, seal it up with a little bit of hot glue and keep working until you have about four or five big feathers that you're going to lay down against the other layers of feathers. And to cover up some of those tips a little bit, I'm going to take a few more rows of ribbon and attach it with hot glue. Once you've got that all in place, I like this kind of ribbon muslin. And I think I'm going to use that, actually, keep it very long so that that's what's going to tie my head dress into place. Getting close. I feel like it's getting close, but I feel like it's not done yet. Hey, Sarah? Here, put this on for a second. Sarah, what if I do a little? Like your Pocahontas? Yeah. Take that back down. Kind of work them in between the ribbons and push them right under there so that they're on either side of the headdress. It needs something else. Some artificial flowers. Just hot glue a couple right there. And now I think you're ready. I love my headdresses, big and small. But I also want to use it as kind of the wow on the table. I'm just going to get an easel, tie the headdress around the easel. I think Thanksgiving is a perfect time to take some of that birch bark or tree barch and turn it into your menu. I'm just going to use some kids bubble paint, so fun, so it gives a little bit of texture. And I'm just going to write out the menu and then I'm going to put it on the easel with the headdress. How fun is that? This is a kid's table I want to sit at. I'm super excited about it. Life is better homemade. I, I feel like we're always at the workshop trying to come up with new ways to use chalkboard paint. I think we all love it. I mean, remember when you got to draw on the chalkboard as a kid? How fun was that, right? I always, I was like, me, can I do it? Can I, I want to write, I want to write. I think it's just something everybody loves to do. So how about make a menu out of it? You know, everybody kind of knows what's there, and as they get to the table, they see what they're about to eat. You just take kind of a cross section of wood. You just bought this at like a, a craft store, right? Michael's it's just a piece yeah, of little. Just a craft store. And then this is chalkboard paint. Yep. And a spatula, and there you go. There's something so cool about this. I feel like I'm sculpting. It's so cool. And don't worry about going too thick, because that just gives it a little more soul. All right, a little more, right. a little more soul. Yeah. Sarah's got soul. And all you did was you just poured it on, right? Yep. Just give it a good, like, just a little glob. Whatever dry. you do, don't over glob. Oh, I like it. That looks good. OK, so just a little swish, just a little swish. But you want to keep it kind of flat in the center so you can write your menu. Now, once that's all nice and dry, your, your chalkboard paint, just grab some sandpaper and smooth out that middle section so you can write over it. Remember, you don't want to get it perfect because you kind of want those ridges, but you want to get it as smooth as you can so you can write easily. You had a smart way to hold it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. pretty, with a okay. little hinge. Like this little gold hinge. Yeah, they're just like a little jewelry box hinge. You get them at any craft store. Most hardware stores will have something. I'm going to hot glue it in place so that it stays right where I want it, and then drive the nail in, and you stand it up and there you have it. Happy, happy day. It's so fun. By the way, this menu you can keep for Thanksgiving after Thanksgiving after Thanksgiving. You just wipe it clean, you're good to go. Life is better homemade.
When you're having a big important meal like Thanksgiving, I like people to stay out. So I don't like people to come in and say, hey, what are you making? What are we having? So to me, I announce it. I put that menu front and center so everybody can see it. And I also think a menu at a meal makes it seem like a bigger deal. Like you've really put your thought into it and your love into it. And this is such a simple way to do it. Uh, design your menu on your computer and then print it out on a clear label, a big, you know, eight by 10 or however big you want it, whatever size plate you're gonna mount it on. Um, but I, I use just the full page, an eight by 10, and I put the whole menu out so everybody can read it, people with old eyes, people with young eyes. Then I'm gonna pick a, a platter, a, a big old platter. Best way to do it is to peel it off little by little. Sarah, yes. can you help me? You see how they have the crease? Yes. That's for people like us. Or so. me. Go ahead, say it. Sarah's way neater than I am. So you see, we take off the little bit. So you just have a little bit of sticky. Oh, and way easier. That, do you want it lower? Or no, high? center. Center, okay. So in the center. So you get the sticky one on and make sure it's super smooth. And you just smooth it out. You go, so you'll have less work to do later. We're just gingerly working through the air bubbles. So you're never going to get rid of all of them, but... So I think the ceramic has natural yeah. dips in it. And then work. And it's, it's kind of best if you have a credit card, you can use that to straighten out the bubbles. But you want to work from like the, outs, the inside out. Then display it on something where everyone can see it. I have this little table easel that I think it looks great on. It's, it's not too expensive, it'll fit right on a buffet table, or right on a dining room table, and just, you know, put it right out there so everyone can see, because life is so much better homemade.